Do you feel drawn to learn more about witchcraft and the occult, but feel lost on where to start? Then welcome to Get In Loser, We're Doing Witchcraft, a podcast all about what it means to be a witch and where to get started on your journey. Join us as we navigate through various witchy topics and share what we have learned about the craft. So get in, witches, and let's learn more about bath and shower magic. magic yes um today we're going to be talking about bath and shower magic the history behind it more information on the element of water itself and how to use bath and shower magic in your everyday practice with this episode we wanted to give a general disclaimer so we will be discussing using corresponding items in bath and shower magic while we often feel like broken records here it's important to say this make sure that you are doing your research When using any herb, make sure that they are food grade and not sprayed with toxic pesticides. With flowers, you wanna make sure that they're also safe in the same way. When using crystals, make sure any crystal that you use, it's safe. Some crystals are toxic and water soluble, meaning that they can seep toxins into your bath water. Some crystals can also be destroyed by water. So make sure you're looking into that before you use them. Personally, I leave the crystals outside of my bathtub along the rim or on, I have a little bathtub tray that goes across my tub, so I'll put them on there. When it comes to essential oils, make sure that the oil you're using is safe to use in a bath and on your skin, as many can cause irritation, rashes, and even worse. Know what you're working with, be careful, and if you have any doubts, don't use that correspondent in your water or in an adjustable or in a bath salt, like period. Just don't use it if if there's any question. I thought it was important to start with a little history. I don't know if you came across any of this stuff, but some of it, I was like, that's interesting. Yeah, no, I don't think I did look into the history at all. I didn't think to look into it, but I've read one article that like something popped up into it and I was like, oh, this is interesting. And I ended up on a deep dive on like the history of like magical baths and bath rituals and baths in different religions. And I was like, okay, we're going down the wrong road. (laughs) So while bath and shower magic is not inherently a, a ritual, we wanted to give a little bit of the background of ritual baths to start us out. Ritual baths are religious or magical ceremonies involving the use of water to immerse or anoint a subject's body. These are often considered forms of initiation. Uh, Ritual baths date back centuries and have been used throughout various cultures, religions, and practices. Some of these rituals are considered closed practices, so always do your research to make sure that what you're doing is an open practice. Ancient rituals often took place in religious buildings, but were also practiced in sources of natural water like springs, lakes, rivers, or the ocean. Most are performed naked, but in situations where a person was clothed, like there were some religions that they do it in like a white robe and it has a, I forget the name of the cross, but it's some kind of cross is um, sewn into the robe on the chest and it symbolizes something within their religion that's part of this particular ritual practice. So when there are clothes to use, they usually have some like a reason for it. Ritual baths have four major elements. So there's water, which is obviously your bath water, herbs, minerals like salts, and then sometimes you use the timing. So you might like see a lot of people do full moon bath rituals or certain days of the week or certain times of the day. Different correspondences mean different things to different practices, even like across witchcraft and paganism. Today's practices utilize a bathtub in most instances, but you can add things like moon water, water from a natural source, milk or coconut milk, honey, and even tea within your bath. All I could think of whenever you were talking about this was the fact that people who get baptized, they're performing a ritual bath. Yeah. (laughs) I was like, do I put that 
So before we dive into using magic within your baths and showers, I wanted to take the time to go over the element of water itself. Water is something that is taken for granted in our everyday lives. It's something that is always available to us and it's extremely powerful, whether you're using it to clean or you're using it in any sort of ritual or magical capability. Water is one of the four elements of matter, the others being earth, air, and fire, which we've referenced many times on this podcast and we'll probably be doing deep dives into each of the other elements at a later date. Water itself is often associated with the goddess as it sustains life. It represents the unconscious, rebirth, and feelings, and it helps psychic awareness, purification, and creativity. Water is adaptable as well, and this is seen in the element itself as it can be used in different states, such as liquid, solid, or gas. Bath and shower magic is a personal practice, and while you can make it an everyday ritual for yourself, it's not necessarily considered ritual bathing. So bathing and witchcraft tend to go hand in hand, and bathing for a ritual or spell work is also common practice. And bathing is also culturally charged to be reflective and purposeful, and it's a great way to practice witchcraft for those in the broom closet under the guise of self-care. This type of magic is a source of healing and inspiration a time to recharge, to heal and refresh, as well as a time to banish and let go. Outside of using physical correspondences like candles, herbs, flowers, minerals, oils, and so much more, you can also use this time for visualization, for setting your intentions, to meditate, and just general healing. According to an article by Astrea Taylor, there are two main types of bath and shower magic. The first is considered absorbing bath and shower magic. So this lets you take in energy and it charges you with intent, thought, or emotion. It's called recharging if the intent is meant to be energizing to you. Things to use in an absorbing bath or shower would be corresponding crystals and stones, non-toxic herbs or flowers, salt, and even non-toxic essential oils that suit your needs and your intentions. And this could be even like a scent for the mood that you're in. So if you're wanting to set like a self-love intention, you could use rose scented essential oils or put rose petals in your bath. And then she describes how she would go about setting a um, absorbing bath or shower. And well, she, she describes it as a bath, but then says you can also do this for the shower. So as the bath water fills, you don't actually get into the tub. While it's filling, you visualize the energy that you desire infusing into the water and then place your hands over the water and imagine it charging the water with those intentions. Repeat your intentions out loud as you do this. When you step into the bath, stir the water clockwise around you and feel that energy soak into you while the old energies leave you. Soak in the filling while visualizing or meditating on higher vibrations. And before getting out, embrace yourself and draw the energy inside of you until you've soaked up all of the good energy from the bath and then carry it with you throughout the day. The second one that she describes is called a releasing bath or shower. So this is a way for you to let go and banish negative energy. Use this type of bath or shower to release old habits, stagnant energy, or if you're feeling like you're stuck. So correspondences to use for this type of bath or shower would be corresponding crystals or stones, non-toxic herbs or flowers, non-toxic essential oils, other detoxifying ingredients like Epsom salt, sea salt, baking soda, apple cider vinegar, powdered clay, witch hazel, or activated charcoal. And for this one, as your bath water fills, ask it to help you release your stagnant energy and to cleanse you. When you step into the bath, you're going to stir the water counterclockwise around you. Imagine releasing negative energy from your body. Try visualizing how like tea seeps out of a tea bag. Like if you put it in a clear glass where you can see the tea coming out and slowly turning the color of the water, that's how you should visualize the bad and negative or stagnant energy seeping out of you. Imagine that the negative energy is being neutralized while moving intuitively to release it from you and into the water. State your intentions or even a spell out loud and repeat it until you feel that the negative or stagnant energy releases. When you're ready, stand up and step out of the bath, leaving the negative energy, releasing it all away from you and then down your drain. 
In shower versions, you would turn your shower on and as the water heats up, do the beginning steps where you're putting your intentions and your energy into the water prior to getting in. And then once you get into the shower, move your body through the water in the direction needed, whether clockwise or counterclockwise. And then spend time under the hot water, visualizing, meditating, and releasing that negative energy or recharging in positive energy. And you could use, um, we've talked about it before, but using a sachet filled with like herbs and essential oils or whatever that you hang over your shower head and let the water run through it. I love that idea. I never even thought of doing that in the shower. I, um, but yeah hate our showers. <laughs> I spend as little time in it as possible. I'm like in and out. I get in, wash my hair, face, clean my body, get out. Mm-hmm. And the t- it's like an RV shower. I absolutely hate it. It's a tiny little square. That's how our shower is too in our house. And it sucks. Like, I mean, technically I guess I could use um, the girl's bathroom. They have like the bathtub with the shower. Um, I just have never used their shower, but yeah, um, yeah, our shower in our bathroom is like, it sucks. I hate, like so. even to shave my legs in our shower, I have to like have my back all the way against the wall and then like try to like bring my leg up a little bit and like yeah. balance it on the other wall. But at that point I'm just like folded over like a little accordion trying to shave my leg really quick. Right. Same. I hate yeah. it. I absolutely hate it's- it app it's terrible yeah, yeah no I feel your pain <laughs> ours is really bad too but what I do do is visualizing I love how you mentioned in there just like spending time under the hot water visualizing meditating releasing negative energy because what I will do in the shower even though I've not done it with like herbs or anything is I will just visualize negative energy washing away from me as I'm in the shower mm-hmm. and as the water is beating down on me, I visualize the water cleansing me completely and then any pain or negative self-talk or doubt or whatever I'm experiencing, whatever I'm trying to release, have the water itself release it from my body. This particular person also too talked about using your soap or your body wash as like a tactile way to push like the negative energy off of you. Like if you're not somebody who can visualize it, you know, Mm -hmm. put your body wash on like your little scrubby or whatever. And then as you're scrubbing it away, imagine that it's scrubbing away the negative energy or infusing you with the positive energy, whichever type you're trying to do. And what an amazing way to get in a really quick meditation every morning. Yeah. Because I mean, for people who say like they don't have the time to meditate, they're always busy with kids or work or whatever you have going on. This is a great way to do a meditation because you're spending that time working on an intention in the shower. Everybody showers. Yeah. We hope. So (laughs) (laughs) this is a great way to do it. Two birds, one stone. And then with both of these, they're also both healing and cleansing. So whether you're absorbing or banishing or whatever, you're still cleansing and you're still healing. They just need to be charged with your intentions. So whatever your intentions are for that particular bath or shower. And, you know, as we've mentioned already, kind of discussed ritual baths, but just for those of you who don't really know what a ritual bath is outside of just using your shower or bath magic in everyday practice. If you're wanting to create a ritual bath, which is like a specific spell. And so you can use this usually in like healing, self-love and acceptance type spells. Ritual baths are a great way to do this. This is a little bit different than just taking a bath or a shower though. So it's a lot more involved. There's a lot more steps to it. It's a very, very intentional. So what you would do first is you would clean your bathroom. So tidy, mop, declutter, wipe down anything, and basically just remove any stagnant energy. So if you have a lot of decor in your bathroom, this might be something you would remove for a ritual bath and literally only have the things in your bathtub or even in your bathroom that are specific for that ritual. And then once you're done cleaning out your space, you would then cleanse yourself. So take a shower. Um, You would wash your body, wash your hair, and just get completely clean. 
And then once you're done with that, then you can start setting up for the ritual bath. And with this, you would use a lot of the things that Tiffany's already mentioned. So you can use candles, crystals, plants, herbs, anything like that. So use intentionally for what you're trying to manifest. Again, making sure that the crystals that you're working with are good to use in your bath or just placing them around your bathtub, around the floor of your bathroom, whatever works best for you. And then what you would do is cleanse the entire area with your preferred method of cleansing. Um, what I would do is probably incense just because it's very cheap, very easy to use. And then once you're done cleansing it, you can just have your incense going in your bathroom while you're doing your ritual bath. And the smell can help put you into that meditative ritualistic mindset. And so if you're using any herbs, flowers, oils, salts, etc. Basically imagine whatever you're putting into your bath is manifesting your intention. So if you're trying to manifest self-love, like we had mentioned above, or glamour magic or something like that, using rose petals or rose scented items is great. If you're trying to manifest any sort of prosperity, you can use anything that's cinnamon flavored or scented, probably not flavored in a bath, but anything, anything cinnamon scented or using mint. Um, anything like that would be great. And what you'll want to do is just meditate on your intention. So if you have water safe crystals that you're using, you can hold the crystals in your hand as you meditate on your intention, uh, because obviously you're going to be getting wet. Like once you have, um, I probably should have mentioned this, but I didn't, but essentially you'll fill your tub once you're done cleansing your area. <laughs> And then you will get into the bathtub um, and then no water. This is just an air bath, just an air bath. Um, <laughs> you visualize that there's water. Just <laughs> pretend that there's water. Um, yeah. So after you cleanse your bathtub with the incense and you cleanse your space, fill up your bathtub, then put in your herbs, flowers, oil, salts, etc., and sit in the bathtub in the water with all of your ingredients and meditate on your intention and like I said, because you're going to be wet, your hands will be wet, your crystals will get wet. So make sure they are good to use in water. And then once you've spent that time in your bath, meditating, performing your ritual bath, once you are done, drain the water while staying in the water. And while you're doing this, imagine whatever is holding you back is draining with the water. So if you're trying to manifest healing for yourself, whatever's holding you back, whether that be pain, sickness, whatever, that's going down the drain. That is in a nutshell, just how to do a ritual bath. There's many videos on YouTube, on TikTok, on just the internet itself on more information on, about ritual baths. There's books on ritual baths. So if you are interested in learning more about ritual baths, there's a lot of resources out there. So outside of a ritual bath, if you're just trying to perform general bath or shower magic, you don't have to do anything fancy. You don't even need to buy anything. You can use bath and shower magic with what you currently have in your home. We have said this before, it's all about the intention. So this can be something as simple as using a mantra or a manifestation and then washing up like normal in the shower, using soap to cleanse like Tiffany had mentioned, and then visualizing the water washing away any negativity, any sickness, any pain, etc. And then also you can use bath or shower magic in cleansing and protection and glamour magic. And it can be used to draw on prosperity, whether that be love, luck, or money to you. So there's many different ways that you can use bath and shower magic in your spell work. This type of magic is great for just general cleansing, like we've said, but it's also good for uncrossing for protections and attractions, especially when using correspondence that help amplify your intentions. Always set the mood through your use of candles, through incense, maybe music, the lighting. Some people I've seen, I don't have an, a bathroom set. I mean, I I probably could, but I just don't go through all the steps to do it. But I've seen people that take baths with like the actual lights off and they just light the whole bathroom with candles and it looks so relaxing. But I feel like for me, because I have cats, that's a lot of work because they also like to come into the bath with me, not into the bath, but they like come in the bathroom, jump on the thing. They try to like paw at the water. And I'm always like, can you just leave me alone for a little and bit? And they're like, no, mom, we can't. Yeah. 
No, I literally, I took a bath last night and I had to have Anthony come get Nike because she kept jumping up there and trying to like bat my drink into the water. And she was like batting my head. And I was just like, <laughs> can you please leave me alone? <laughs> she's such a brat, but she's so cute. <laughs> she really is. But yeah, you could set like candles out and just have the actual lights off and just bathe by candlelight. I feel like that would be so nice. I just feel like yeah. I can't do it myself. You'd have to like- <laughs> intentionally put the cats in another room make sure the doors lock because it takes a lot of work too setting up all the candles and light them and then well and then like with my cats like if I shut the door they just sit at the door and hit it and hit it and hit it or they like reach under and pull it so it's just like not even worth it for me Mm -hmm. I'm like it'll it'll drive me crazy either way you could also use oils and crystals like we've talked about just use whatever's going to put you in the right headspace For music, there's a ton of stuff on YouTube that you can look up, but I am linking a specific one in our show notes for you all. So it's a YouTube video that is two hours, 22 minutes, and 22 seconds long. And it's a ritual bath ASMR that I believe it's noted to, it's supposed to charge you with solar energy while you're bathing. And it's just meant to be played like quietly in the background just to help set the mood and help you relax for your bath. But while charging you with that energy, there's a ton of them out there this one was just the actual video was just visually pretty with all the flowers and like a milk bath like it was so pretty and then the the sound was very very calming so that'll be in our show notes if you guys want to try that out choose oils and candle scents based on your mood or intention like I talked about earlier if you're trying to do like a self-love bath you could use rose petals or rose oil I have what is it called it's called the birth of Venus it's a bath oil by Lucid Living Co and it's rose scented and it's pink and it's shimmery and it makes your water smell so nice and it makes your skin so soft afterwards so I use that with a few rose petals sprinkled in or I'll buy a bath salt that has them in there I need to buy some bath oils because I'm not, I don't have any bath oils. I never even thought about it, but then we'll read books where they'll, you know, it's like a fantasy novel and they're yeah. all like, oh, yeah, and a bunch of oils and stuff. And I'm like, who puts oils in their bath? I do. Every every (laughs) bath. I'm like, I have like four of them. I need to buy more because I'm a lot of them are getting pretty low. One of my favorites is like a, it's a Halloween special only. So I like only use that for special occasions. It's called, this is Halloween. And I forget exactly what's in it, but it's got a cool mix of correspondences and them. And they're just, they're all shimmery and pretty and they smell so nice. Lucid Living Co. makes some really, really good bath oils and bath salts. I will definitely have to check them out. I hope they ship APO because that would be great. Um, If not, I'll ship it to you. (laughs) Heck yeah. But yeah, I'm super interested in that. The only thing I will say, I do have like, it's not a bath oil. I think it can be used as a bath oil, but I never do. But I have like an oil that I put on my skin when I, like as soon as I'm done taking a shower. Oh yeah. That's about it. It just smells good, but it's not anything like I'm intentionally putting this on my body because of this, this, and that. It just, it smells nice. And so I put it on my body. You can (laughs) get the, I think Lush, no, I know Lush sells them, but they're like solid. They're just like little tiny. It's just like a solid oil. Okay. And so you put it in your bath and it floats and dissolves throughout the time of your bath. And then it soaks into your skin. Nice. I've gotten a couple, I forget what they're called, but it's literally just like a bath oil, like a solid bath oil that melts into the bath. I'll have to check them out. I love Lush and they have them here which I thought was crazy. They don't have a Sephora, but they have Lush. And so I wonder if Lush is like a UK thing. Uh, I don't know, probably not, but they have them here. And so, which has been nice. But uh, along with that too, um, bubble baths and bath salts and bath oils. I mean, with any of the, the things that we've mentioned, they don't have to be anything special. They don't have to be from any specific company or supplier or metaphysical shop. You can literally purchase lavender, vanilla, eucalyptus, mint, bath, <laughs> bath salts, bubble baths, whatever from like Walmart or something. Like they have so many different just fragrance of if just like the salts or the bubble baths or whatever at any store that you shop at. If you don't have the money to invest in like a small business or you don't have a metaphysical shop near you or you don't like to buy things online, whatever the issue is, you can use what you have. I mean, I feel like we have to say that every episode because that is such, it's part of the toxicity of this community is that you have people saying like, you can't use Walmart or you can't use the dollar store because they mass produce things. And it's like, sometimes 
people have to do what they can afford. I know for me, like with like the lavender, chamomile, my rose petals, I get them from where I buy my teas. I buy them in huge bags, like in bulk, and I get them super cheap, which I've even, I feel like I brought this up on one of the, I can't remember which episode, but on one of the other episodes where there are people out there too that will say you shouldn't buy herbs, period, that it's like toxic to buy herbs and that you should be growing them yourself. But it's like some people live in apartments. Some people don't Mm -hmm. have the space. Some people, maybe they're not good with keeping plants alive. Like that's a thing, you know, you have to put time and effort into a plant. And if you don't have that, you're not going to be able to grow your own herbs and flowers. That's a lot of work. Yeah. And especially too, if the herb is like basil. where it's super needy but I feel like basil is really easy my nemesis in herbs is rosemary really I can't fucking keep a rosemary plant alive (laughs) the only one that I've been able to keep alive we actually call it our rage plant because we've we tried planting rosemary and it never grew and so then like late like a few months later we were like well let's just grow the sage in here and so like a single sage plant like popped up it wasn't really healthy it's a tiny little planter and we had a whole like raised bed garden of it outside so we weren't really worried about it we just wanted to try this planter and then randomly in the middle of winter a plant popped up and it's got like the softness of sage but it's like the shape and like structure of rosemary so I don't know if these seeds just combined and made their own plant I'll send you a picture of it. It's in my yeah. kitchen. It's so That's weird. weird. Your rage plant. I don't know why I cannot keep basil alive. Like always buying. I love fresh basil. I put it on everything. Yeah. I keep it in my window in my kitchen. I water it every day. And it's still, if I go one day without watering it, it just that shit will. is dead. It's just <laughs> dead. And I'm just like, oh my God, why are you so needy? I'm like, come bad. on. I know you don't need that much water. What's wrong? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I cannot keep basil alive to save my life and it sucks because I love it that's like the one thing I use in cooking outside of paprika I love basil like fresh basil (laughs) I use all of it all of it I'm still waiting for the weather to get nice here it's cold as shit today I'm like it's literally April 18th (laughs) it should be at least comfortably warm outside yeah but no it's still it was in the 40s this morning yeah overcast rainy and I'm just like I just want to I want to grow my garden I'm ready to put the plants in the beds and Illinois is like no (laughs) ma'am absolutely not so when you're choosing loose herbs or any correspondence really choose ones that correspond with your intention your herbs can be added directly to your water. You can put them in reusable muslin sachets or um, something that you can do if you don't have a sachet or you don't really like the idea of plant matter being in your water. You can brew a really, really strong tea with whatever herbs that you are using that correspond to your bath and then add that tea water to your bath once you've filled it. Bath and shower water touch all parts of us, our body, our emotion, our mind, our spirit, and this makes them a great source of cleansing, of vanishing, and of charging. To learn more about cleansing, vanishing, and charging, just go back and listen to episode six where we discuss this in full detail. So you'll want to visualize yourself being cleansed of the old negative or stagnant energies washing off of you and flowing right down the drain. Using your soap, like I said earlier, you can just physically cleanse yourself and visualize that these energies and just like the stagnant or negative is being washed away and down the drain. If you're using an actual bar of soap, you can carve sigils into the soap and charge it with your intentions that way too, and then use it in your shower or your bath. This allows you to customize your experience to fit your needs and your intentions. After a magical bath or shower, make sure you drink a large glass of water to encourage further movement of energy and integration of the energy. It's also a good idea to take a cool drink into the bath with you to help prevent any chance of overheating, enabling you to stay in the bath longer. If you're like me, your bath water needs to be hot enough for two hobbits to come in and throw a ring in it. So (laughs) I, I have to have like the hottest possible bath ever. So I always take like my large tumbler of water into the bath with me along with some other drinks, or maybe I'll make a cocktail or a glass of wine that I also take in there with me. Like when you're in the bath, you're sweating most Mm -hmm. of the time. So you're like sweating and you need to replenish water into your body. So just make sure you're doing that too. 
Some of my own personal tips would be to do this at least once a week, but more often if you want to. I literally take a bath every chance I can get. If we have nothing going on that evening and my husband's playing games with friends online or he's got homework to do, I'll just go sit in the bath for an hour. Even if it's not bath magic, I'll take a book with me and just go relax and read and just kind of get all the negative from my day, like let all of that out while I'm in the bath. Sometimes too, I like to, you know, everybody does self-care Sundays. So sometimes if we don't have anything going on and I know that like we're just planning like a lazy Sunday, I'll start my morning with a bath. Like I'll go down, I'll make a cup of coffee and then I'll take it upstairs and sit in the bath and read a book or take that time to just quiet my mind and drink my coffee and relax for a little bit before I start my day. And then muslin bags, I know I mentioned them before. I keep several of these on hand at any given time. I work with a lot of herbs, period. And so I use them for more than just the bath. So I have, I probably have like 50 of them and I have all kinds of different sizes. So for, you know, different flowers can be a little bit big for the small tea size muslin bags. When you fill these with herbs after your bath, you just clean the herbs out, like toss them in your compost or you can just throw them away and then hand wash the muslin and let it air dry. And then you use that however many times you want to. You can use fresh or dried herbs. You can use flowers. You can use fruits. I used a mixed medium in my bath. So, you know, sometimes I'll slice up some lemon and toss that into my bath with some dried flowers. Um, Sometimes I'll make like a whole bath tea in a muslin bag and toss that in there. I just kind of go with however I feel that day. And then pre-made bath oils, Like I was talking about before, I love ordering them from Lucid Living Co. You can make your own, but I I do a lot of things and I just, I don't personally have time to do that too. I try to order mine from small business if I can, but you can literally go on Amazon. You could get them from Walmart or Target or wherever you're shopping. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, just as long as it's safe for your skin. If you do shop from Lucid Living Co., though, they also have bath soaks that come with corresponding crystals. And then they have uh, some fun bath bombs and like coconut milk bath mixes. They have a lot of like really nice bath stuff. Bath bombs are a great resource if you don't have the space to store a bunch of dried flowers and herbs. Try to shop small business when you can, but again, if that's not within your budget, Amazon, Walmart, dollar store, wherever you can get what you can use. With small businesses, some that I could recommend would be Witch Baby Soap, the Witchy Washy Bath Co., the Witch's Bath, Bath and Body Magic, and then again, Lucid Living Co. has some great stuff. There's obviously plenty more out there. Those are just ones that I have ordered from, and I know they have like really nice products. And then if you're someone who likes those bath bomb kits or you want to make your own bath bombs, there are tons of videos on YouTube, TikTok, anywhere on how to make your own bath bombs and shower melts. I will never do this because I am lazy. But if that is something that interests you, you have, and you have the time to invest in it and the money to invest in it, this is a great way to further imbue your intention into what you're doing. I will never do that either because, well, I have tried. <laughs> Look, you've done crafting with me before. Yes. <laughs> For those that don't know us personally, we used to run our local chapter of Geek Girl Brunch. We were the officers and every brunch we would come up with little uh, takeaway gifts or crafts or silly little things to do just to have fun while we were brunching. And we have a lot of Pinterest fails in our, <laughs> in our history. <laughs> Uh, um, the only one I can think of right now is the when we try to do the Mario thing. Yes. I don't even remember <laughs> what it was. I just remember it was so bad. It was really bad. It was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> so crafting things like that is just not in my repertoire. Um, for me, I use a specific incense. It's only for when I take a bath because it kind of triggers my mind to, oh, we smell this smell. We know we're taking a bath. So let's relax and slow down. Uh, We discussed this particular method in episode five, and it's just a way to help you get into the meditation mindset. If you're like me and you like to take super long baths, take a book into the bath with you. Once you've relaxed and had time to cleanse, banish, and charge yourself, just spend some time reading in the bath for pleasure to extend that relaxation moment. Or you can even listen to a podcast or an audiobook. Um, I know some people will like take their iPads in and like watch a TV show. I wouldn't 
wouldn't recommend that just because something like a TV show on the screen or a movie is like stimulating you again. Whereas like this needs to be a time that you're like taking time to slow down and relax and not overstimulate your mind. Yeah, I don't ever, I do not understand why people take, I mean, I guess, you know, whatever works for you, right? But I never understood the whole concept of bringing in like your phone to watch something or an iPad to watch something while you're taking a bath. I have a friend that has a TV mounted. No way. At the base of it. So they have, it's similar to my bath setup. So it's like the shower, then there's like a deep garden tub and then a wall. On that wall at the base of it, they have a TV mounted and then a little fireplace, like electric fireplace mounted underneath it. So they'll turn on the fireplace, which that I'm down for. But then they put on like TV and they just lay in the bath and watch TV. And I'm like, if I wanted to like watch TV, I'll just lay on the couch and do that. Right. I want this to be my like calm time. Exactly. Like we're so stimulated anyway with technology. Like is there ever a time where uh, the TV is not an, like an accepted in every place? Like right. we should have places in our space where we don't have electronics. Yeah. Well, and even and now, like new. with books, a lot of people read books. I will buy books or use Kindle Unlimited for books that I don't want to buy the physical copy of, or if it's like yeah. a book club read or something, or if I'm just trying to save money and not buy every book out there. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Look, I will buy a book. I if feel your pain. It's cute. Yeah. I'll buy it. <laughs> But even now, you know, we read books on tablets or on our phones. So like, there's, there's just like no sacred time without some kind of electronic in front of our face. And I mean, a lot of, a lot of people have sleeping problems, but a lot of people will go to bed and I know I'm guilty of this too. We'll go to bed and like scroll through TikTok or scroll through social media or Anthony will get in bed and like research things because he researches everything. But like, (laughs) but we're literally just on our phones until we try to fall asleep. And it's like, you put your phone down and then you're trying to fall asleep and you can't. I just, Mm -hmm. I need certain times where it's just, there's not a phone or a tablet. I need a hard copy book, some hot water. A good dream. Yeah. <laughs> and that would be like if you are experiencing any sort of insomnia or just trouble relaxing, maybe try like doing your own sort of meditative ritual bath, no electronics, and then see how you feel after that. 90% of the time I take a bath before bed when I take baths. Sundays are the exception if I'm like, ooh, let me pop a face mask on and hop in the bath for a little bit for some self-care. But I will usually like wait until it gets late in the evening. Like last night, I think I took a bath at like nine o'clock. So I got about like 10, 30, 11-ish. And I crawled in bed and I was so relaxed. And it was yeah. Well, and I think too, in some cultures, I didn't do the research on this, but I just remember hearing this too. It's just that in some cultures as well, like it is just customary before you even, because your bed is such a sacred space, before you get into your bed, you have to at least wash your feet. And yeah. obviously you can't into your bed wearing clothes that you've worn outside of your home. Yeah. And so having that process of just making your bed like a sacred spot mm-hmm. and then using your bath or your shower in the evening as a way to completely cleanse you of the day and would be a great way, like we mentioned before, to meditate as well, mm-hmm. getting into that mindset of just you know, taking a bath right before you go to bed or a shower right before you go to bed, doing some of these, you know, manifestation work, doing an intention and then getting into your bed. I mean, seems like a perfect way to end your night. Works for you. It works for you. (laughs) I found this, I have this book and I'll link it in the show notes. The Element Encyclopedia of 5,000 Spells by Judica Isles. This book is amazing. It has so many different spells but I came across this one it's called the white cow healing bath spell and so basically like there's so many different types of like bath spells in here but I thought this would be a great one like if you are you know interested in any sort of like a health spell or healing if you're in pain or anything like that um this is kind of a weird spell but (laughs) I thought it was interesting um so it says While they remain so in modern India, once upon a time, cows were sacred all around the world. The bull and the cow respectively represented the ideal state of male and female health and vitality. The cow's healing power was transmitted through her milk. This healing bath is based on the ancient magic traditions of Celtic Ireland and Scotland. So it says in order to do this spell, essentially what you'll want is gently warm milk, ideally from a white cow or a white-faced one, which 
I'm assuming any cow's milk will do because <laughs> unless you're like milking the cow yourself, how are you? You're not there? gonna know. Yeah. <laughs> but so what you'll do is you'll pour this into a bowl over dried healing herbs and let them steep together. Then you'll strain out the solids and add the milk to your bath. Any herbs suitable for your health may be used. For general vitality, try a combination of chamomile, lavender, and rosemary. So I thought it was an interesting little spell. That is interesting. And I mean, I've heard of using like milk in your bath or I know a lot of people use coconut. I buy like coconut milk bath soaks from Lucid Living Co. So it's like dried powder. Yeah. Milk, but, and it does make my skin feel really nice. So yeah. With that though, at the expense of sounding like a broken record, always do your research on corresponding items that you're using in your bath water with you to avoid any mishaps. If it's questionable, do not put that item in your water. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know, like say like there's an ingredient that you have that you think would be awesome in your bath and you can't find any research online whether or not it's safe to use in a bath, just don't use it. Yeah. Just don't use it. Do it. Don't be <laughs> safe in your bathing practices. <laughs> That's it for this episode of Get In Loser, We're Doing Witchcraft. You can find our source material for this episode linked in the show notes. If you love this episode, we would be forever thankful if you leave us a five-star review on wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you really love the show and want more Get In Loser content, check out our Supercast link provided in the show notes or search the Supercast website Forget and Loser, We're Doing Witchcraft. There you can purchase a membership to our podcast and obtain exclusives like getting episodes early, shout-outs on the show, access to our Ask Me Anything forum, our monthly newsletter, a promo code for merchandise, and more. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Get In Witches or email us at we're doing witchcraft at gmail.com. Check us out next week for a special episode all about the lore surrounding the number 13. Until then, blessed be witches.